In this video, we're going to learn how Bright improved its D360 long-term retention by 15 percentage points. What you're going to cover in this video are three takeaways. One, how to use human behavior and parallel industries to form insights and thesis about your own products. Second, how ensuring and enhancing coherence between different features and products improves the business as well as the user metrics. And third, how to generally approach breaking down any problem statement before you start deep diving into it. Cool, so let's begin. In the structure, I'm gonna divide it into four parts. First, I'm gonna be talking about the context and the problem statement. Secondly, the general process of how we broke down this problem and attacked it. Third, our key insights. And finally, our results. So let's begin. So the context is what is Bright Money and our problem statement, right? So Bright Money is a B2C FinTech app serves in the US market that helps people improve their finances. It helps us in uh, improving their credit, managing their credit card, saving interest, providing them loans, and helping them build savings. Our problem statement was clear. We had to improve both our short-term and long-term retention, and our long-term retention target was roughly 15 percentage points. So how did we attack those problems? So initially, as always, you need to very cleanly define your metric. In our case, it was D360 retention, and we defined it very cleanly. Second, you need to baseline it and set your minimum, max, and achievable targets. Third, you need to then go deeper in your data, trying to break it down across segments, across user behaviors, across products, and then approach it from there. So now let me give you an example how very simplistically we broke down our retention. If you think of it, retention can be thought of in three parts. One, your onboarding funnel, which means expectation setting. What do you want the user to think and get inside the app? Second, your in-app, your activation moments, which essentially is expectation management. Given you sold him something, did you manage to live up to those expectations? And third, expectation consoling, which is at the time when the user is leaving the app, can you manage to retain the user? When we wanted to attack this problem after doing all our primary, secondary research talking to our users, we narrowed down to the second part, which is expectation management inside the app. Now let's drive to the second part. What were our key insights and thesis? So as I mentioned, we, we narrowed to two insights. One, that human behave, behaviors are repeatable and very predictable, similar. Second, improving finances is a long-term process. It's long-term delayed gratification. So we started mixing these two points and looking at parallel industries and behaviors. We narrowed down from meditation and finally landed at fitness. So we made three observations when we started really deep diving into this. Observation number one, you don't keep different trainers for different parts of your body. A person doesn't have a different bicep trainer, different chest, different leg trainer. Hence, the insight being all your products need to talk and interact with each other smartly. Observation number two, priorities keep changing, but your energy and time is limited. What that means is in the fitness context, you might be more focused to, let's say, working on your legs, but that doesn't mean your time and energy to give to other parts of your body remains the same. You have to keep adjusting. It is a limited pool. Again, the insight being in terms of finances, your finances are limited. You might want to focus more on reducing debt and then investing, or you might be interested right now for saving for a vacation and not invest as much. So all your different products, again, need to intelligently interact with each other and talk. Third, you must have all seen this, similar in the fitness game as well, is... The first thing that a person gives you, the trainer gives you, is a plan, your diet plan or your gymming plan. And this is the first sense of gratification. The insight being in, the finance, in any industry where there is long-term gratification and delayed gratification, you need to give small wins. Now, this has been solved in multiple ways through gamification, but the key insight being offering a plan is the first sense a person feels content, even if he's not followed the plan, just having a plan itself. Now, having got all these insights and observations, we narrowed and we came to the final results. What we did was right till now, we had different products, our credit card manager, which should help people reduce that credit card debt, our savings pockets, which would help people build their savings, our line of credit, which would offer people loans. Each of these products were individual. Consolidating our insights, what we created was a financial plan, a single financial plan, which was step-by-step, -step, hence offered gratification which would automatically adjust to the user's priorities as their finances adjusted. Hence, each product was talking to each other. And thirdly, 
it offered a clean real estate for us to introduce new products to cross sell and upsell. The results from this were, we improved our short term D10 and D20 retention by 17 percentage points and our D360 retention by approximately 14 to 15 percentage points. We also saw approximately doubling of uptake and engagement amongst all our three different products because you put them in a graduation step-by-step -step financial cloud. So some of the key takeaways, well, before we get into the data, if I was to take away from this video would be one, always try and think about extrapolating how human behavior thinks and how we can use in your product. And secondly, how not to treat each different feature and product in your app separately, but bringing it all together in a journey for a user. Successful apps like Duolingo have always proven that, that this works. Thank you.